Hey, hey guys, today we are going to talk about all the different ways that you can make money with Amazon from home. Let's get to it. If you are new here, I want to introduce myself. I am Kristen Ostrander, host of the Amazon Files podcast and owner of mommyincome.com, where I use 18 years of e-commerce experience to help other people start and grow businesses on Amazon as a current seven-figure seller. I am fully equipped to help you reach your Amazon selling goals, so let's Let's get to it. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell so that you're notified when a new weekly video is released every week. All right, let's get to the different business models. What are the different ways that you can make money on Amazon? First, this is a fully full disclosure type of thing. I want to give you guys a brief overview of all the different ways that you can make money with Amazon from home. And I know there's a lot of videos out there, a lot of people selling things, a lot of people telling you how to make money from Amazon. It is absolutely 100% a legitimate business. I support my family doing this. I've been doing this for a really long time. I've been in e-commerce since 2003, selling on Amazon since 2008. So uh, I'm almost like the grandma of, of Amazon. And so I want to be able to tell you the different models that are out there so that you can make a very informed decision for yourself on how or when or where you want to start selling on Amazon or what business model you think is right for you. And of course, stay tuned because I'm going to tell you what I think is the best model. And I've tried all of these, every single one. I have tried every single Amazon business model that I am going to talk about today. And I'm going to give you a little bit of the pros and cons of each one. And then I'm going to just let you know kind of the idea of the time and money investment. Remember, brief overview, just to get an idea of what are, what's out there and what it, it, what is right for you. I mean, now in when, with all this crazy stuff going on, quarantines, the 2020, COVID, everything else, tons of people are looking for work at home opportunities. And I'm telling you what, this is an excellent one. But I didn't say get rich quick. I didn't say it was going to be fast and you can make your rent money in a week and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to promise you that, but I'm going to promise you that there is money to be made and there's different ways to do it. I want you to stay focused and I want you to take some notes to figure out what is best for you and then start pursuing looking at those options for yourself. If one of these just resonates with you really well and say, oh, that sounds like the business model that I would love, then that then there's tons of information out there, especially on our channel and other things. So let's get to it. All of these are also going to vary by um, the time and investment level that you have, financial investment and time investment level that you have. Also, some of them require more skills than others, but you don't really have to start with any sort of knowledge, even if you're not tech savvy. I'm not very tech savvy myself, so um, it doesn't take, it's not rocket science, but it does take a learning curve and it does take some work. So, okay, what is the first one? It all depends on what a time and money investment. So these are ones we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about arbitrage, retail and online arbitrage, wholesale business models, private label and white label business models, wholesale bundles, merch by Amazon, Amazon custom, KDP, and finally Amazon affiliates. And so there's definitely hybrids. You can do more than one of these at a time, but you want to start somewhere. And so let's get to that. Okay. So the low budget um, fastest way to get started on Amazon is to sell actual products, low budget type products, um, books, go thrifting, garage sales, free stuff, stuff from your house, or even a consignment level where you have people that bring you things or that you can sign for them and you sell them through your Amazon store. So that's a, those are the low budget um, options and that would be a part of arbitrage. So if you don't know what arbitrage is, Arbitrage is basically buying from one place and selling in another, buying from some sort of retail or resale establishment. So this could be anything from garage sales, thrifting, estate sales, all the way to going to Walmart, Target, places like that, buying off of a retail shelf and selling it for more online. And I got my start with thrifting and with um, retail arbitrage, and there's definitely pros and cons to those types of things. But... Um, it's a possibility and it's an easy way to get started. And you can do arbitrage online and offline. So you can go into regular stores and find products to sell on Amazon as well as going to um, 
as far as and going to websites and ordering things and then shipping them into Amazon. So that is that is the definition of arbitrage is just buying from retail sources, whether it's online or offline, and um, reselling them on Amazon. It's a very popular model to get started because you don't need a whole lot of money to get started. You can go start scanning clearance sections. You can go scan books. Books are the number one cheapest thing to sell on Amazon. They're not going to make you a ton of money. Of course, there's always hidden gems, right? But it is an easy, cheap way to get started. You can start on your own bookshelf for free. You can start your Amazon account. If you want to know more about starting an Amazon account, you've never even had one, don't even know how to set it up. It is not a hobby. It's a legitimate business. It's going to take some, um, you know, uh, some time to be able to set up properly. Go to mommyincome.com slash beginner and get your roadmap to your first sale. So if you've never sold anything on Amazon, roadmap to your first sale is mommyincome.com slash beginner. And you can, you know, get, download the infographic that tells you um, all the different steps to take in order to start your Amazon account. Um, because either way, no matter what you do, one of these business models, you're going to need an Amazon account. And it's not as simple as, you know, filling in a password in a in an email address and then going forward after that. You actually have to have a tax verification. You have to have a legitimate business. It's not just, hey, we'll do this kind of on the side. There's definitely um, things that Amazon requires for that. So that's where if you want to start the thrifting, you want to do books, you want to do it on the cheap, you want to get started fast and easy, um, I would start with that and I would go to mommyincome.com beginner and you can um, get that that thing there. It's a free guide to help you get started. Again, books are cheap, they're easy to find. You can sell books all day long on Amazon um, in different places, of course. Um, you know, that's a really great way to just get your feet wet and get started and learn the process. Now, remember with Amazon, with the FBA program, you are going to be tagging or labeling your items and shipping all of them in one box or multiple boxes, if you have lots of stuff, shipping it to Amazon's warehouse. And then they then will ship it to your customer. That's called fulfill by, Fulfillment by Amazon FBA. And they will send it to your customers. And then you don't have to process individual orders when people do that. Now, Merchant Fulfilled is the other business model on Amazon where you store all the inventory at your house and when somebody orders it, you send it out to the customer. The downside to that is A, you have to ship to the customers individual orders. I mean, what if you get 200 orders in a day? Do you really wanna process that? That's why FBA is so great. FBA is great because also they handle customer service, they handle packaging and they handle, they, they're all prime customers. So your customer gets it in two days. If you're shipping it, eh, not so much. It's really difficult to get them in for two days. So those are those things. Arbitrage, we covered anywhere, anytime. The pros of this is you can go to any store, any place, regional um, stores, regional places, you can get instant shipping. So there's no lead time. You don't have to wait for wholesale orders to come in. But then you have to do things like sticker peeling. If it has a price sticker on it, you're gonna to have to peel the sticker off. You know, your customer doesn't wanna see that you got this for a dollar at a yard sale or something like that. And it can be very time consuming to actually go out, pound the pavement, find the stuff that you wanna sell, you know, then prepare it the way Amazon wants you to prepare it and then send it into Amazon. That's very um, time consuming. If you do it online with arbitrage, you're not limited by time or location. Um, it's kind of hands off. You can use discount codes, rebates, money back, you know, when you're purchasing things like from Rakuten or um, you can use coupon codes from Honey, you know, things like that. But then you've got shipping costs and you also have lead times because you can order and then somebody's going to, you know, they have to ship it to you and then you have to ship it into Amazon. So that's the other downside of online arbitrage is then also other people have the same exact access to all the deals you have to where if you're going out to stores to buy things, then you don't need to the, you know, the person that's not there at the same time, they might not have the same things on clearance. They're not in your region. They're not in your, your area. But people who, well, for online arbitrage, everyone has the same access to all the sites, all the software, all the deals, all the everything. So that's kind of um, a downside to the online arbitrage. Okay, wholesale. So wholesale is definitely one of my favorites to be able to do Amazon. Um, it's all, you can do it all online. You can use a prep center, which, you know, you can order things from your wholesale um, suppliers, ship them directly to a prep center, a prep facility, an FBA, whatever you want to call it, FBA prep center. Myprepcenter.com is my favorite. Tell them Kristen sent you. 
Um, but those things, like you, you can be almost hands off with wholesale when it comes to it. You can buy in quantities. You can start learning to bundle, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, you can get discounts. There's no tax and they deliver it right to you. So pretty much if you're doing a wholesale business model on Amazon, you're ordering from the same places that Walmart is ordering from the same companies and suppliers that like all the big retail and small retail companies are from. You have access just because you do not have a physical location does not limit you to being able to purchase wholesale. It has to do with where you're selling it. Of course, some vendors have rules, of course. And if you want to know about uh, the vendors and, and if you want to get started with wholesale, I have a great download for you. Mommyincome.com slash vendors. You can get five, a list of five vendors that you can start working with today that work with Amazon sellers, have less than $300 minimum orders. Now you have no excuses to start wholesale. Wholesale is probably one of my favorite business models on Amazon because it's really easy to find products to sell. There's lots of software tools out there to help you kind of analyze um, what's profitable, what's not, all that, those sort of things. The downside is there's a lot of competition when it comes to that because lots of companies are listing all of their products on Amazon regardless of um, whether or not it sells well or not and everybody has like similar access to that. Okay, another another um, business model that's very popular right now and lots of people are talking about it and I actually think is the one that you should not focus on is private label products. Now here's my two cents about private label products. Number one, I do think it's the top of the food chain and at some point you're gonna wanna have a private label product. That's absolutely true. But as a beginner, if you're just starting out, if you're just thinking about starting on Amazon, you have never done Amazon before, do not start with private label. What is private label? Private label is, okay, you you know, I've seen some, some videos out there that people are saying, hey, you go, you look on Amazon, you use something like Helium 10, which I highly recommend. Love Helium 10. Mommyincome.com slash Helium 10. Um, so yeah, I do love Helium 10, but I use it for product research, of course, and building listings, and they have an amazing suite of, of tools. But a lot of people are using it to find products that are doing well on Amazon, and then they go to overseas or stateside vendor uh, places, they have one made with their own private label brand on it, and then try to compete with all the products out there. It's like, hey, find a, a popular product. I've seen this before on videos. Hey, it's a yoga mat. These yoga mats do really, really well. So go to China, have your own yoga mat manufactured, or basically buy one that's white labeled that you can put your own private label on it, and then go to the marketplace and sell your own brand of yoga mats. Well, the reason why this isn't the greatest way to start is number one, it takes a lot of time, money, and energy to be able to do just that process alone. What they're not telling you is that can take months on it on end. I have done private label. And as of right now, there's a couple different product, private label products that cost me thousands of dollars, usually the minimum order for something that's custom made, or you're having it custom made, or you're tweaking an existing product and putting your own brand and your own packaging and all that kind of stuff. It takes up to 12 months or longer. My first whole, my first private label product that I started, which was not until eight years into my Amazon journey. Okay. Just full disclosure here. Um, it took like six months to be able to get it. And that was just a small, inconspicuous kind of product. It was be able to be air mailed. Anything that's gonna come on a boat on freight, you're probably gonna have to order at least a thousand units. If not more, it's going to be very expensive. My second private label product took 12 months and thousands of dollars. I would not recommend starting with that. First of all, if you've never even sold on Amazon, you don't even know if this is right for you. You haven't even got your feet wet or tried it out. So you don't really even know if you enjoy the process, if it's just something. Look, you can't just chase money. It's just another job. It's not a business. It's not something that's gonna bring you a lot of money if, you don't, if you're not fully invested, both mentally, financially, with your time, everything else. So private label is very expensive. There's a huge, huge payoff if you get the right product, if you have the right brand, if you get all, if you have everything you know, going well. There's, they can have no competition on your exact product that you're making, especially if you kind of, if you're an inventor, you know, private label might be the absolute best place for you. But if you're not very creative and you don't want to reinvent the wheel and figure like, hey, I can break through and compete with Nike, like, let's be real. 
it's not really going to happen right away. You need time to be able to build up and understand how Amazon works and how their algorithm works and how their list building works and all these things before you just jump right in to private label. So you need to be aware of those things. Um, there's a lot of marketing and promotions. There's a lot of time, upfront time and money costs, often months, sometimes almost a year and thousands of dollars. There's a lot of research and a lot of all those types of things that you need to do. So if you're a beginner on Amazon, I don't recommend starting with your brand new own product unless you already have products and you're selling them offline and you want to bring them to the amazon marketplace that's a whole different thing that's basically just making an amazon presence and that's way easier than starting from scratch and, and creating a product and doing all of the things i want you to go there eventually but that is not where we start okay so we've gone through arbitrage methods these are physical product methods you know re retail and online arbitrage and thrifting cheap easy way to start it's a it's a stepping stone you don't want to start and stay there wholesale is is part of my favorite um private label uh, i think eventually it can be a goal of yours do not start there my favorite business model is kind of a hybrid between wholesale and private label it's called wholesale bundles i actually created wholesale bundles and i'm almost 100 percent wholesale bundles in my business if you want to learn more about exactly what wholesale bundles are watch this video here because that will that gives you probably less than five minutes of an overview of exactly what wholesale bundles are what are they i will give you a brief explanation Wholesale bundles are highly complementary products that you purchase from wholesale vendors and you sell them together to create a convenient, easy experience for your customer. So think of a kit, an accessory kit, a gift basket, something like that. Something that all things go together anywhere, anyway. And you know, watch again, watch the video to be able to see in depth of some examples of what wholesale bundles are and why I think they are the absolute best business model that you can do on Amazon. Okay. Here's a couple of more of different things that you can do on Amazon to make money. Merch by Amazon. Merch by Amazon is basically your print on demand, create t-shirts, sweatshirts, things like that from Amazon. You, you, you're gonna need ideas. You need design ability or you need to be able to hire a designer to be able, you're basically creating shirts. This is great for people who have been creating shirts and, and printing, screen printing and things like that, digital printing offline and they've been done, doing it for years. Merch by Amazon is just your way to get all those things onto Amazon and it's print on demand. That means you carry no inventory. It's all done digitally, remotely. You don't have to have, or have to carry inventory. You don't have to deal with returns. You get a royalty for creating your design and then selling it. So you can have a t-shirt that just says positive vibes only or something like that. And then have it be a pretty design. You put it on Amazon. When someone buys it, Amazon prints it, sends it to your customer and you get a royalty. You don't have to deal with manufacturing. You don't have to deal with storing, shipping, any of that stuff. Um, you have to apply to the Amazon, Merch by Amazon um, system right now. And as of 2020, they haven't been taking a lot of new applications because they're overwhelmed with all the different things that they're doing. But they are still, you know, always fill out the application anyway, if that's something that does it. It's great for local businesses. Um, pricing and marketing strategies are going to be involved because it's not a set it and forget it. Even if you create the best design in the world, you have to be able to market it and send it to people or um, make sure that it's being visible because there's a lot of competition. Why? Because this seems easy, right? Hey, I just designed a couple of shirts, throw them on Amazon, make a ton of money. Um, it's not that simple, but it's a simple process as far as you don't have to deal with physical products. But the, the difficulty comes in with competition and it comes with um, marketing and making sure that your items are visible and that people can see and that you're, you're bringing ideas to the table that are very searchable and also not copyrighted and all those types of things. Um, okay, Amazon Custom. For those of you who make custom products, say you make custom soy candles, maybe you make um, jewelry with um, people's names on it or engraving or um, I knew a guy named Joe who made dog tags that with specific type things. He had a dog tag maker and he's a veteran and he decided he wanted to make, you know, um, memorabilia or, you know, different dog tags. So that's all custom products, right? Each order has a custom made. So Amazon has Amazon custom for people who are custom making things. So, you know, it's kind of like your, your Amazon version of Etsy, where you can custom make things and people can fill out different forms to be able to order custom from you. So if you are a custom 
person and you're making custom things and you're trying to bring your products to Amazon Marketplace, but there's this custom element, um, search for Amazon Custom. That is, it, it exposes your products to a bigger audience. Are you going it, to, it just gives you another piece of the pie, another income stream. If you're already doing it on eBay, if you're already doing it on Etsy, you have a local shop, maybe you go to, um, you know, craft markets and things like that. This is just another way to sell your items. So just um, consider Amazon Custom. Okay, another one is Kindle Books, uh, KDP, um, used to be called Create Space. now it's a Kindle Direct Publishing. This is for content creators, this is for writers, illustrators, this is creating a physical book, a product that Amazon can ship for you. Now, before you're like, oh, I'm not a writer, I'm dismissing that or whatever, the reality is that there's a lot of people that are creating, these are print on demand, remember. So POD is print on demand, that means you upload um, your design, your writing, your everything else, you have a cover, you upload it to Amazon, and then when someone orders it, they print it and ship it to your customer. Again, no inventory to carry, no upfront costs to you. Did you hear that? If you're a designer or if you're somebody who likes to write or has context or, or ideas for ebooks or ideas for even children's books, maybe you're an illustrator, maybe you're making a picture book even, as long as it's your original content, you can upload it to Amazon and you can get a KDP account and you can start selling your creations right away with no upfront costs. Again, you get royalties from that and of course you want to do some promotions and things. People have also done these KDP print on demand products to include in their wholesale bundles. Um, I know a friend who is creating journals. She creates the journals, she sells them separately, but then she also um, orders her author copies, right? We had a steep discount and she has created this product. It's like a self-care type journal and she puts it in with her self-care bundle and does amazing with that because where else are you really gonna go and have some sort of book printed and all that kind of stuff? Amazon will print one at a time. I mean, that's a great system. So it's a great way to be able to do that, especially if you're a content creator, if you're somebody who likes to write or any of those things, that is an excellent way to get started. Um, KDP, of course, is a great, there's some courses and stuff like that out there for learning how to do Kindle books or uh, KDP publishing, things like that. So, and then the final one is Amazon Affiliates. Now, Amazon Affiliates is like if you're a blogger or if you've got a website and you just want to uh, uh, use an affiliate account to, to sell other people's products on Amazon, but you're basically peddling that in your um, the affiliate links, you know, it, this is, this is going to be very minimal money. I mean, I have an Amazon Affiliates account and every time I sell, a, you know, I recommend a product and someone buys the product, I get like pennies on the dollar. And I mean pennies, like you might get 10 cents if somebody buys something that's like a hundred bucks. But over time, if you have a lot of traffic and you're leading people to specific products, one of my favorite people that does this is, um, I, I follow a lady that's um, uh, that does acrylic pour painting and she's always linking to her Amazon um, store uh, all the things that she recommends like as far as paint and brushes and all these different things and she links everything to Amazon well if you get a hundred thousand people to your blog every single week and like at least 10 percent of those people are buying supplies and you're getting that, that stuff can add up eventually but you got to put your links in there so it's for bloggers social media YouTube other businesses writers people who have places to put links to other people's products again it's all digitally based it's all remote there's lots of different things the greatest part about Amazon and selling on Amazon and the different business models is I feel like there's something for everyone. Like if you're like, well, I don't really want to sell physical products, or maybe you have a disability and you're not even able to sell physical products, or you don't want to process that, or you don't have a warehouse. I did it out of my home for many, many years. I finally have a prep center. So now I'm hands off inventory. I sell inventory. I sell products through wholesale bundles, through my kits, but I don't touch the inventory. I send it to a prep center. So all of those things are done remotely. That means I can work from anywhere, anytime. I don't have to be low. I don't have to be stuck to one location. That's good about that. If you don't want to do physical products there's all these things available to you if you've heard of business models that are like starting over right and like the the ones that are starting with private label but you're like well i don't have twenty thousand dollars to start and i don't have a year i want to start making money now then choose one of the other business models like retail arbitrage or wholesale look you can get into wholesale right now today if you have a, you can get a legitimate business or i would say maybe in a week or so if you have a legitimate if you don't have a legitimate business set up you're going to need that again mommyincome.com beginner and you can get your roadmap to your first sale on amazon and that's just getting started and once you learn one start with one business model 
then you can start adding other ones. I do several of these on Amazon. I do have my own private label product. I do wholesale bundles. I do wholesale. I do have a book on KDP. My book's over there, Dream Big, Stuff Small. Um, uh, there's other products that, that I have there as well. So I'm doing, a, I do have a Merch by Amazon account. I sell about five shirts um, that I've uploaded. So just to try it and see what happens. But my by far, my favorite is the wholesale bundles business model because it has over all of these things has made me the most money. That's the first million dollars I ever made was with wholesale bundles. Um, it doesn't have as much competition because you're essentially creating your own private label product. It just doesn't have the time, money, investment that uh, a, a private label product actually does. So paying attention to that as well. If you want to learn more about any of these things, go to mommyincome.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to learn more about everything Amazon and how you can make more money with Amazon. We'll see you next time.